I got a call at five in the morning. I was asleep, and um, his housemate, who was this lovely elder British woman, um, she called. She said, "Sarah, honey, John's put himself in front of the train." And she just said it flat out, and I just bolted out of bed. It was still dark, and flew out of my apartment, got in my car, went straight over to his house where they were, and he hadn't died yet. So he was knocked unconscious and he was at Stanford Hospital. So we went over to the hospital and um, it was a series of getting different information from the social workers and the doctors and finally they, they, they told me that he had died in surgery. Um, after, he, after he died, um, I saw a grief counselor and I was in the middle of graduate school. And one thing that she said to me, which really has stood out for me, was that I was living through a PhD in grief. It wasn't that I, yes, I was getting a PhD in psychology, but my experience was actually the training for what I'm supposed to be doing. I've always been fascinated with death and also love. And I found myself in graduate school studying topics related to death and suicide and loss and also at the same time really curious about relationships and intimacy and soulmates and ended up doing my dissertation on that. But I couldn't just decide on one aspect of life and I decided to work with both because for me both death and love are the most meaningful aspects of a human experience. It actually happened to me, sort of my fate in a sense. I experienced um, deep, deep loss. And um, I had a soulmate who died. And um, he took his life. And it was in that experience that I had to live through his death, live through my own death, and make meaning out of our love. I just. I couldn't believe it, like he had actually done something like that, that John that I knew would have done that to himself, because he was the kind of person that wouldn't hurt a fly. If there was a snail on the ground in the path, he would like move it aside so nobody would touch the snail. So it was shocking to learn that aspect of him and that he could do that to himself in such a public, violent way. And I have to say that state of shock lasted for a long time even though I still knew that this was happening because it, it was almost like time stood still the day he died and I couldn't comprehend that days and weeks and months were past. Off, you know, we were marking them off the calendar and I remember my birthday came months later and I, I couldn't believe it. So it took some time. And for a while when I was in so much pain, around his death, I, I kept arguing. I mean, I was mad, and that's part of grief. I was like, why is this happening to me? I don't want to deal with this. I don't want this to be my life. Why is this my life? So yeah, it was um, one of the inner wrestlings that I wrestled with during that time. And, and now I have a different um, state of consciousness around it. It really shifted my consciousness, and so it feels lighter and um, I feel like almost everything that has happened to me has sort of been a training for being able to hold people's pain in this particular way. It seems to me that some people are on this path that I call it's the path of the brokenhearted. And it's their way of having their own awakening by opening their heart. The brokenhearted, as I think Rumi says, um, the breaks in your heart are where the light comes in. And so the broken heart opens you up to so much more love. And you know, there's so many people that I'm sure you know of, and this is part of your calling, that have these horrible heartbreaks. And it's an opportunity for growth. And I know that if I could survive this hell, you know, this was sort of the embodiment of my worst fears. And if I can survive this, I can survive anything. So I have a deeper sense of myself. Like I really know my shadow. I know my, my pain. Um, 
I know my limits. I know my vulnerabilities. And I'm a lot stronger. And I have more of a connection to what I call spirit and to my relationship with the divine. And um, it feels like that experience was an, an initiation of sorts into my life.